Hi everyone, let us discuss this example. See in this example, we have a set, we have a subset of R and we have to prove that it is a compact matrix space or compact set, right? So we have to prove that it is a compact subset of R du. Du means a usual distance. It's defined as D of X, Y is equal to mod X minus Y. Okay. So let me write first the given set. We have, we have K is equal to 1 by n, n is a natural number and union with singleton 0. Okay, so what it means, if you put n is equal to 1, n is any natural number. So I will start with 1. If I put n is equal to 1, the first element is 1. If I put n is equal to 2, we will have 1 by 2 for 3, 1 by 3, 1 by 4, 1 by 5 and so on. Okay. So, and zero also they have mentioned, we, they have taken union with zero. So we start with zero. So such set we have, okay. So what will I do? I will draw the diagram so you can easily understand. Suppose this is our real line, okay. Suppose this is our real line. We have zero somewhere here, okay. So suppose our one is here, one. So one by two will be here. Next one by three, one by four, getting in this way we have all these elements and uh, yes 1 by 4 1 by 5 1 by 6 1 by 10 1 by 100 1 by 1000 and so on it will never terminate union with 0 so such sets k we have and what we have to prove we have to prove that k is compact so let me mention here to prove that to prove that k is compact so uh, do you remember the definition of compact set when we say set is compact, if every open cover has a finite subcover. So here also I am going to prove that K is compact. So that means we have to prove that every open cover of K has a finite subcover. So let me consider any open cover of K. So let script C G alpha alpha belongs to lambda be any open cover of K be any open cover of Okay, I'm considering any open cover. So that means, uh, where shall I write here? So therefore, that is K is subset of union of G alpha, alpha belongs to lambda. It is an open cover of K. That means every set is an open set. That is also so much important thing. So let me call it as statement number one. So this thing we have, this thing I have considered, okay, it's the open cover of K. So now our target is to find finite subcore of script C, which also covers K. So let me write here. Okay, we have some space, let us use. So clearly that zero is also element of K. So let me mention clearly zero belongs to K. Getting now what we have, we have considered here open cover of K and we have to prove that it has finite sub cover. So I started with zero. Okay, so zero is element of K and K is subset of union. So Therefore, zero belongs to union of G alpha, alpha belongs to lambda. So zero belongs to union. That means there is some set G beta, which covers zero. So let me mention. So therefore, there exists some set G beta or there exists some beta belongs to lambda such that, such that zero belongs to G beta. Getting my point? It means there is some set G beta. I don't know what is it, but suppose G beta is this one. So suppose this is our set G beta such that zero belongs to G beta. But see, every set is an open set here in this family. So therefore G beta is also an open set. But G beta is open. Do you remember the definition of open set? When we say the set is open, a set is open if for each point of that set, it is possible to draw ball around it, which entirely lies inside a set, getting? So let me show it here. Suppose we have a set like this. So when we say it is an open set, if you have any point A from that set, it is possible to find ball around that set, which is subset of that set. Then we say the set is open, okay? In previous videos, we have already seen this definition. So here G beta is open and zero belongs to G beta. So I can apply the definition of open set. So therefore there exists some radius R greater than zero such that 
zero belongs to that open ball with center zero radius r subset of g beta r. getting the point so g beta is open so that's why by definition of open set i could write it but see if you have a real line okay if you have a real line in the real line open ball with center a radius r is a minus r a plus r so this is interval we get when we have open ball in r with a usual metric so open ball with center a radius r will be like this a minus r a plus r so therefore therefore let me write but b zero r so let us find this ball also uh, i am going to apply the same definition there okay to find this open ball so b zero r is equal to just a minute zero minus r zero plus r that means obviously minus r comma r so therefore what can i write zero belongs to minus r comma r since this ball is nothing but this interval which is subset of g beta statement number two so let me show in diagram this is a zero we have which is element of g beta and we got an interval minus r to r getting so here also i have written zero belongs to that interval and that interval is subset of g beta so this thing we have got in statement number two okay so now there is no more space to write make a screenshot of it then i will go further okay so see now what will i do okay so this thing we have so now i'm going to use archimedean property do you remember archimedean property so that property says if you have any real number definitely we can find natural number greater than that so that archimedean property i'm going to use here so by archimedean property archimedean property so that property says if you have any real number so i'm taking here one by r there exists a natural number capital n such that such that one by r less than capital n so if you have any real number i'm taking one by r so we can find a natural number greater than one by r that means n here we got let us interchange simply so what will you get one by n less than r so we got one natural number such that one by n less than r so let me show in diagram you can easily see we have r here so now right now we got one natural one real number one by n is it visible is one by n is less than r this thing we got okay so for for if you take any natural number greater than or equal to capital n let us see what will happen if you take reciprocal of both sides so one by n less than or equal to one by capital n right but see one by n less than or equal to one by capital n and just now we have got one by n less than r so let us combine these two inequalities so therefore one by n less than r right and it will be true for with this condition i should mention for all n greater than or equal to capital n right yes so this is a condition we have uh, used so uh, let me mention it here so one by n is clearly greater than zero so zero less than one by n less than r right uh yes so one by n uh it's a positive real number getting so therefore we can write minus r minus r less than one by n less than r so it's a positive so obviously minus r is less than this for all n greater than or equal to capital n so now you can see here one by n one by n one by n is less than one by capital n it can be here and it it is greater than minus r and it is less than r that means it lies in that interval okay so let me uh, write here just make a screenshot of it then i will go further okay so therefore what can we write therefore purposely i kept this uh, statement number two since we are going to use now okay so from this one what can we write therefore one by n belongs to that open interval minus r comma r since it lies between minus r r and this is true for all n greater than or equal to capital n this is statement number three see zero belongs to minus r comma r one by n is also belongs to minus r comma r so let us combine two and three so from two and three what can we write that zero and one by n both of them r from minus r comma r and basically minus r comma r is subset of g beta and i should carry this condition for all n greater than or equal to 
capital n right so let me remove this minus r comma r it is not required so therefore what can we write simply 0 1 by n subset of or sorry belongs to g beta for all n greater than or equal to capital n so are you getting the meaning of it 0 belongs to g beta in diagram also you can easily see this is our g beta let me highlight it okay this is g beta so 0 belongs to g beta as well as that 1 by n is also belongs to g beta for all n greater than or equal to capital n so let me make this picture clear so what will i do n can be greater than or equal to capital n so it means you can write 0 you can start with capital n 1 upon n plus 1 1 upon n plus 2 1 upon n plus 3 and so on all such elements belongs to g beta getting g beta so let me show in diagram so 1 by n is here so 1 by n plus 1 will be somewhere here 1 by n plus 1 next 1 by n plus 2 will be somewhere here 1 by n plus 2 in this way all these elements belongs to g beta that means uh, what we are we saying we had consider one open cover getting we consider one open cover g alpha alpha belongs to lambda but there is a single set g beta which can cover all these elements okay which can cover all these elements so let us find which elements are left now which elements are left so see let me write here let me write here so uh, see which elements are left let me write as a rough work here one is left one is not covered by g beta 1 by 2 is also not covered by g beta 1 by 3 is also not covered and 1 upon n minus 1 is also not covered and all re remaining elements and 0 all these elements are covered by a single set g beta so let us talk about the remaining elements which are not covered by g beta okay so let me mention here here okay clearly clearly 1 1 by 2 1 by 3 and so on 1 by n minus 1 all these are elements of k basically these are elements of k and that uh, g alpha alpha belongs to lambda is open cover of k getting open cover of k so therefore what can we say each elements will be covered by some g alpha getting so therefore i can say there exist some alpha 1 alpha 2 and so on alpha n minus 1 belongs to lambda such that such that 1 belongs to g alpha 1 1 by 2 belongs to g alpha 2 and so on 1 by n minus 1 belongs to g alpha n minus 1 we are getting the point that means that one is not covered no so that's why it is covered by suppose g alpha 1 that 1 by 2 is also not covered so we can say it is covered by g alpha 2 1 by 3 is also not covered it is covered by suppose g alpha 3 in this way we will go up to 1 upon n minus 1 that means suppose it is covered by g alpha n minus 1 see 1 is covered by g alpha 1 2 1 by 2 is covered by g alpha 2 and 1 by n minus 1 is covered by g alpha n minus 1 and all the remaining elements including 0 are covered by g beta so what can we say we can say all these elements are covered by union of these sets okay let me mention this thing make a screenshot of it then i will go further so therefore we can write therefore 1 1 by 2 1 by 3 and so on including 0 huh? and so on 1 by n minus 1 1 by n and so on all these are elements are covered by g alpha 1 union g alpha 2 union g alpha 3 union and so on union g alpha n minus 1 union g beta right but see this is nothing but set k so therefore what can we write therefore k is subset of g alpha 1 union g alpha 2 union and so on union g alpha n minus 1 union g beta so we can say this is finite subcover right so this is finite subcover since it has finite number of sets n minus 1 and this one that means total n sets are there so we can say therefore script c dash g alpha 1 g alpha 2 and so on g alpha n minus 1 g beta is finite subcover 
फाइनाइट सब कवर ऑफ स्क्रिप्ट सी फॉर के सो वी स्टार्टेड विथ वन ओपन कवर ऑफ के एंड वी गॉड इट्स फाइनाइट सब कवर सो देर फॉर वी कैन डिक्लेयर एवरी ओपन कवर ऑफ के एज फाइनाइट सब कवर देर फॉर के इज कॉम्पैक्ट ओके सो देर फॉर एवरी ओपन कवर ऑफ के हैज फाइनाइट सब कवर एवरी ओपन कवर ऑफ के हैज फाइनाइट सब कवर हैंस और यू कैन राइट डेयर फोर देयर फोर के इज कॉम्पैक्ट सो इन दिस वे बी प्रूव दैट दैट के इज अ कॉम्पैक्ट सबसेट ऑफ आर ओके सो मेक अ स्क्रीनशॉट ऑफ इट देन वी विल स्टॉप थैंक यू सी यू